Hi, welcome to part two of my tutorial on the harmony of minor and the primary chord movements we find there. Like in major, the chords in minor are built on each degree of the scale. So if I were doing the scale of F major, that would be my one chord, two chord, three chord, four chord, five chord, six chord, seven chord, back to one chord. Same thing happens in minor, but it's a little more involved, mainly because we use the melodic minor, where we raise the sixth note of the scale and the seventh note of the scale, and they return back to the basic minor on their way back down. So these notes are variables. We have these two on our way up, and these two on our way down, and they have to be incorporated in our harmony. So using the key of C minor as an example, here's my one chord. We only have one version of the one chord because we don't have these variables in the chord. But when I come to my two chord, it's either diminished because of the sixth note of the scale, but if I raise the sixth note of the scale, I get minor. So which one should we use? They're both available, but composers and arrangers over the years have come up with a solution where they say, well, the diminished form is used more often than the minor form. So we're going to call the diminished form, in this case, regular, because it's used more often, versus the minor form, they're going to call irregular because it's not used as much. Not a question of better or worse, basically to do with the usage. So our regular two chord in minor is diminished, our irregular is minor. The three chord major is regular, but if I raise the seventh note of the scale, I get an augmented fifth. That is irregular. The four chord comes in two forms, minor and major. The minor because of the six on the way down, and major because of the six rising going up the scale. The minor form is the regular, major is irregular. Five chord, same thing. The seventh note is flattened going down, so it comes in the minor form. It also comes in the major form because the seventh note can be raised. Usually on a five chord, we add the seventh, which creates the tritone. So that makes the major form, along with the seven especially, the regular form versus the minor irregular form. The sixth chord likewise comes in two forms. We have the major form, in this case A flat major, but when the six is raised a half a tone, that makes the chord become diminished. The major is the regular, the diminished is the irregular. Same thing happens on the seven chord. Here is my major chord, but the seventh note of the scale can be raised a half tone to create a diminished chord. This is the form that is considered regular, mainly because it has a, shares a tritone, like the V chord, and both those chords are regular, while the major form is irregular. So why don't we take a look at these chords written out. I'm using C minor, so there is my key signature, three flats. The one chord is C minor. The regular form of the two chord is diminished, and I naturalize it, raise the sixth note of the scale to make that D minor the irregular form. The regular form of the three chord is E flat major, and when I raise the seventh note of the scale, it makes the three chord augmented the irregular form. The regular four chord minor, while the irregular chord is major, using the accidentals accordingly. Like in major, we add the seventh to the five chord, and again, that creates that all-important tritone between the third and the seventh. So because of the tritone, the major form, the G7 in this case, becomes the regular form, while the minor five chord is the irregular form. Six chord, the A flat major, is our regular form, and when I raise the sixth note of the scale, it turns that sixth chord into an A diminished, in this case, the irregular form. 
On the seven chord, the regular form is the diminished, while the irregular form is the B flat. Now remember, regular and irregular does not mean a better or a worse chord. It's based on usage. So we tend to use the diminished chord as our regular chord, mainly because of the tritone of which we find on the five chord as well. Personally, I've noticed that the irregular form seems to get probably more usage than this, but the tritone seems to trumpet. Here is C minor, again, same chords, except I don't have a key signature. So therefore, I'm creating these chords by using accidentals. So my one chord, C minor, not surprisingly an E flat on the third to make it minor. My regular two chord diminished, again the A flat makes that diminished. When I naturalize it, the irregular form becomes D minor. As I move from the two chord to the three chord, regular form is major, and the augmented form, that's why I put the natural there, comes from the raised seventh note of the scale, provides me with my augmented chord, the E flat plus. Four chord, minor, of course, being regular, major being irregular. Again, the five chord, the added seventh, the regular form is the G7, while the minor form is the irregular. Moving to the sixth chord, A flat major is my regular form. When I naturalize the A, that raises the root a half tone, making that A diminished, my irregular form of the six chords. So and my 7 chord, the regular form, the B flat diminished, mainly because of the tritone, and the irregular 7 will be the B flat. It's very important that you write out these chords for yourself. Using different keys, write out the chords from the melodic minor using both key signatures and accidentals. Believe me, it will definitely reinforce the chords you find in minor. So as I mentioned, it's really important that you relate to these chords in all different keys. I'm going to just take a quick look at D minor for an example. Again, based on the melodic minor, where the sixth note is raised half a tone, the seventh note is raised half a tone, and they revert back to their minor form on the way down. I'm not going to mention the irregular chords, but I'll point out the ones that are regular. One chord. The two chord diminished is regular, the minor form. Major form for the three chord, regular, augmented. The four chord, minor, regular, major. Five chord, usually with a seven, regular, minor form. Six chord, regular, diminished. 7 chord, the diminished form is regular versus the major form which is irregular and back to the 1 chord. Let's take a look at the primary movements. I'm going to be dealing with the 1 chord, the 4 chord, and the 5 chord. So let's look at the 1 chord moving to the 5 chord with a little melody to help along and let's see what we've got. If I were to use the irregular form, that would be the G minor, same melody, listen to the difference. There's lots of minor in it, but it lacks that push into the one chord. Let's look at the one chord, moving to the four chord, and back to the one chord. Let's put a little melody to that. Simon and Garfungal. What if I were to use the irregular form of the four chord? That'd be the F major in this case. Let's see how that would sound. Kind of takes the M out of minor. I've never enjoyed the irregular form of the four chord, mainly because of its major quality. It just takes away from the minor flavor, at least for my taste. Question comes up, can the four chord, like it does in major, act as a subdominant to a dominant function? The quick answer is yes. 
Four chords are often used to set up the five chord, which is dominant, and returning back to the one chord. So subdominant, dominant, to the tonic. So let's give that a listen to. about interrupted cadences. That's where, for example, the five is interrupted going directly to the one with the four chord slipping in. So having a five going to a four before it returns. Absolutely possible in minor. Let's listen to that. Here I'm going to set up an 8 bar sentence. So I'm going to be using a 1 chord, going to the 4 chord, using that as a subdominant function, moving to my 5 chord, and back to my 1 chord. I'll do a turnaround, come in with the last 4 bars, 1. This time I'm going to be using the irregular form of the 4 chord, the major form, to the 5 chord, and back to the 1. And we'll add a little melody to that. So my one chord, two, four, five, one, my turn around, and back again for the last four bars, one, irregular four, major four, I still think the last four bars would sound a little better if they were all regular forms. Generally speaking, in minor, the chords don't move around as quickly as they do in major. More likely the reason behind that is that minor is a darker and heavier sound. So join me in part three as we look at the movement of two of the secondary chords. Until then, bye for now.